The intent of this video is to discuss the external features and factoids of the B-17 ball turret by conducting a walk around of the gun stations. This video is part two of a three-part series. The ball turret is only one of the eight to nine gun stations on the B-17 bomber. The ball turret is 44 inches in diameter and constructed of cast aluminum, steel, plexiglass, and tempered glass. The turret's armor was discussed in the part one video. The ball turret houses the turret gunner, dual Browning M2 50 caliber machine guns, ammo, gun sight, crew systems, the self-contained hydraulic power unit, and turret controls. The B-17 ball turrets were non-retractable, although it could be jettisoned if a belly landing is anticipated. In contrast, the B-24's ball turrets could retract into the bomber's fuselage. The entire ball turret weighed around 850 pounds. Over 1,000 hours were required to machine the ball turret structure. There were only three manufacturing facilities within the U.S. capable of machining the turret's precision ring gear. The sides of the turret are fabricated from cast aluminum and plexiglass. The end bell assembly is bolted to the bell trunnion ring support bracket. The trunnion ring is a pivot point for the ball in elevation. The guns can be depressed from level to 90 degrees down in 3 seconds and rotate 360 degrees in azimuth in 8 seconds. All these gunner viewing windows are plexiglass except for the front circular main siding pane which is fabricated from a tempered glass. None of the turret transparencies are ballistic though. Here is the open port which expels the spent 50 caliber cartridges and belt links overboard. This small panel is detachable for machine gun installation and removing. The Browning M2 50 caliber machine guns were removed for cleaning after every mission. The gun's casing group, which includes the barrel shroud, were left bolted to the ball turret as shown highlighted. The remaining guts of the gun were slid out of the gun's casing group for post-mission cleaning. What is not shown is the fire cutoff cam follower. It is hidden by the fuselage skin. The cam follower is part of the plane's fire cutoff system so the ball turret gunner does not shoot his own airplane. The cam follower is contoured to match the arc of the propellers. A spring-loaded pin is located at the front of the ball turret above the main sighting circular viewing pane between the barrels. If the pin contacts the cam follower, it will depress, breaking the gun's solenoid firing circuit. The ball turret guns will not fire when pointed at the propellers. The cutoff system does not apply to the bomb bay doors when open. Gunners were warned not to fire forward with the bomb bay doors open or when bomb release was expected. The camp followers were adjusted by bore siding through the barrels. The gun's line of sight could not be closer than 10 inches away from the propeller's diameter. The turret's elevation drive gearing teeth are exposed here. The barrels are 28 inches apart and unlike the closely spaced tail guns, the ball turret guns do not require flow deflectors. The front circular siding window pane is tempered glass, not ballistic though. Each gun weighed 61 pounds and the barrels were 36 inches in length. All bomber gunners needed to complete a six week training course which included 50 hours that were dedicated to the bomber turrets. Upon completion of the class, the cadets received their gunnery wings. One or two of the F-1 cylinders were attached to the turret's bracing to provide the ball turret gunner his own supply of oxygen. On later versions, the ball turret gun stations tapped into the plane's oxygen system. Each one of the F-1 cylinders will provide the crew member two hours of oxygen and were refillable in flight by the waste gunner. The ground crews loaded 50 caliber ammunition belts by draping them into the ball turret's integral ammo canisters. The turret's rear ammo box feeding the left gun holds 571 rounds. The turret's forward ammo box feeding the right gun holds only 445 rounds. 500 round external ammo cams were adopted on the later model ball turrets to provide additional ball turret space cavity, ease ammo loading, and even out the ammo quantities between the guns. The ammunition belt mixes varied throughout the war. Early mixes included every fifth round as a tracer, and the four rounds between the tracers were armor piercing. Later, belt mixes eliminated the tracers due to optical abnormalities and the gunner's over-reliance on tracers for aiming. Later ammo belts included 100% armor-piercing incendiary cartridges. Data collected by the 8th Air Force showed expelled spent cartridges damaged many airplanes that were flying below the formation. The ball turret is powered by its own self-contained hydraulic unit. 
The turret spins in azimuth when the pinion gear meshes with the fuselage's circular ring gear. The turret guns are elevated by the elevation pinion gear meshing with a fixed elevation rack gear. The turret also has manual hand cranks both inside and outside the ball. If experiencing a power failure, the gunner in the turret has the ability to manually rotate and or elevate the guns. The ball turret gunner needed to be informed when any of the other nine crew members needed to relieve themselves. The ball turret gunner would need to point the guns aft. This will limit the exposure of the turret's viewing windows in the forward direction. The relieving crew member will detach themselves from the plane's life support and comm systems, plug their oxygen hose into a portable walk-around bottle, and proceed to the bomb bay. While standing in the bomb bay catwalk, he will need to take care of his business into the plane's relief funnel. The relief tube hose threads through the fuselage and ends on the port side where the ring root intersects with the fuselage. The rubber hose extends 3 inches from the plane and is 1.1 inches in diameter. Unfortunately, the discharge had a tendency to spray on the ball turret. Any overspray would freeze on contact and could limit the ball turret's visibility. The ball turret gunner sometimes jury-rigged their own relief system. The field modifications of this system can be observed by the relief holes cut into the plexiglass view transparencies. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to the channel World War II U.S. Bombers.